Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just going to start the session off by doing a quick sound check to make sure that you can hear me. If you can, please type yes in the chat box located on the right hand side of your screen. Always like to make sure the audience can hear us before we begin. Can everybody hear me? I can that's see a yes. That's good. Oh, that's always a relief. We start <laughs> off on the right foot. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Um, so just a quick introduction from me. My name is Chantal Newton and I'm the marketing manager at the UK Contact Centre Forum. I'm also editor of our online magazine, uh, Contact Centre Monthly. Just want to say thank you for taking the time to join the webinar today. Um, and this webinar is being held in partnership with both Calabrio and Route 101. A few housekeeping points to go through before we begin. We do have a couple of poll questions for you to participate in today. These will appear automatically on your screen. When they do appear, you just select which answer most relates to yourself. Um, it's a multiple choice, but you can only select one answer. And once we have all of our votes, the poll will be closed. I'll show the results and it's then up to our panel to discuss. If you do have any questions for our panel today, please pop those in the question box. Um, we are taking questions throughout the session if they're relevant to what the guys are talking about. Um, alternatively, we'll have a, a short Q&A session at the end as well. We're expected to last about an hour today, so if you are unable to, to attend the whole session, it is being recorded and the email uh, with the recording session link, sorry words, <laughs> um, will be in, in, within that email today, so you don't have to worry about missing out. And please, we encourage you to share the link with any employees or any colleagues that you may find or will also find the information um, helpful. So I'm going to get today's session started so I can put my teeth back in and I'm going to hand you over to Richard Pennington. Uh, Richard runs the partnership team lead at Calabrio. Thank you very much, Richard. Thanks, Chantel. Um, welcome, everybody, and, uh, and welcome to, to Alvin. Great to be spending some time um, having a conversation with you for the next 45-ish minutes. Do you want to just start by introducing yourself? Sure. Uh, my name's Alvin Lobo. I'm Head of Performance Management at Dojo. Um, so I look after all the support teams that just help ensure the contact centre runs incredibly smoothly. Perfect, perfect. And great, great it's been great to, to meet you and spend time with you and get to know about your, your business. And I'm delighted we've got the opportunity to share that with our audience this afternoon. Um, what, in terms of the structure of what we're going to do, it's a conversation and we've got no PowerPoint. We've got, we're going to run a couple of polls, right? And um, nothing more than that. So I think if you've been on the, the UK CCF webinars in the past, you, you're familiar with the with the with the approach to polls and we've got a few of those but this is a conversation and I, I, I joked with the team a little earlier that I feel like a, a rookie Martin Teasdale in this kind of podcasty kind of conversation that we're going to have but let's let's kick off Dojo um, since talking to you particularly I've become familiar with Dojo and recognize it everywhere but explain who Dojo is sure so um Dojo has been in existence since 2009, um, originally under the brand Payment Sense, um, but in the latter part of 2020, we, we launched our new product and brand Dojo. Um, first and foremost, um, Dojo is a payments provider. So we provide payment solutions to businesses. Uh, we're a B2B company, um, so many of you probably haven't heard of us, um, but I can guarantee majority of you have used one of our card machines in a coffee shop, restaurant, bar, barbershop. Um, independent businesses are absolutely our bread and butter. Um, so in terms of the operations, uh, we've got two operations, um, one based up in Hull. Uh, we've got around about 130 employees supporting our payment sense customers. And um, our new, or not, not, not so new anymore, um, operation in Bristol, where we have around about 260 employees um, supporting our Dojo customers. Brilliant. So I, it's funny, you, you mentioned that um, you, you might not be familiar with the brand, but you guarantee that you'll become familiar. And I think that, that, list, that list of retailers that you just went through, I seem to have visited all of those in the last seven days. And, it, and they've all got do, the Dojo payment hand, handheld card payment machine. So I'm, like, like you said, I, I'm seeing it everywhere now. Um, you're in Bristol today, right? What's, what, what's, uh, what's going on in Bristol today? Um, so, so we're in Bristol today. Yeah, I tend to be in the office kind of four or five days a week now. Um, and um, but today, actually, we, we're we're hosting our operations town hall. We do a quarterly town hall where we we get all of our employees, everyone off the phones, um, 
uh, all the support teams together um, across both sites, Bristol and Hull, and um, basically just give everyone the company updates, um, do some reward and recognition, just talk about what's going on in operations, celebrate some successes, and also just give everyone a heads up of what's coming over the next quarter. Excellent, excellent. So you've got some some time with us here on this webinar now, and then you'll be on your feet in front of a few hundred people, I guess, a little bit later <laughs> this afternoon. Yeah, this really is the warm up for later. Yeah, which one? I wonder which one's the easier one, right? This is it's always interesting. What you're more comfortable with? Can you just tell us a little bit about your contact centre operation? What what that looks? You mentioned the two centres, but what what kind of interactions are you handling? What what what, what are the nature sure. of, of the, the the interactions that you you deal with? So working in a fintech, um, it's it's a real interesting mix because we're not a traditional contact centre. We're sort of halfway between a contact centre and an IT help desk um, because the products we offer is is the queries that we get off the back of it are, are very much troubleshooting um, problems that might occur with the card machines, um, Wi-Fi, SIM connectivity, things like that um, as part of um, a part of the support that we provide our customers. Um, so because of the nature of the businesses and our customers being kind of hospitality in that world, when they do have queries and challenges, they tend to be pretty urgent. They tend to be, they're in the middle of the working day for them, they're trading, they need some support. So therefore their preference um, to contact us is very much by phone. Um, they need an answer there and then. Um, they don't. They some customers like to do web chat, and and we have that as an offering. But our our biggest contact channel is is voice, um, followed by we we have a number of channels so that customers just have a choice. So so we do email, web form, um, chat, and social. Yeah, I get it. And and like you said, if you think of that making a payment on a card machine, if there's an issue with that machine, then that's urgent. So voice is the that is the obvious channel that that your customers exactly. would be picking up, right? And it, and it's it's a twenty four seven economy. So how, how does how does the shape of the opening hours and support hours across a twenty four seven requirement? How does how does that look for you? Yeah, absolutely. So so um so when we set up Dojo, actually, what what we did was we um we went out and did a lot of customer research to just ask potential customers as well as existing payments and customers. Um, when do you when when do you tend to contact us? When would you want us to be there for you? Um, and a really obvious answer came back of, well, you need to be open when we're open. Um, so looking at our demographic and the types of customers, um, we offer a full service seven days a week, um, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Um, we offer technical support from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, as well as emergency technical support from 11 p.m. Um, th through back through to 8 a.m. So, so essentially for emergencies, we were 24 seven, um, but for full customer support, um, it's eight or six, seven days a week. Excellent. And and you, you'd kind of talked about it earlier in, in, in the conversation about how you've evolved as an organization, you know, the, the, from, from that yeah. original business now to, to Dojo. And in fact, the, the, the title of, of our webinar is From Good to Great. And I can kind of see this, this journey that you're going on towards this ambition for great. Do you want to just kind of describe some of the, the changes that have made and some of the challenges that you've been through, particularly in the last few years? Sure, absolutely. So, so when Dojo was first set up, um, we wanted to learn from our college, uh, from the payment sense experience and um, and improve on it. And what we found out from our customers was how much they value customer service. And the new product under Dojo, um, we it's, it's a premium product. So we wanted to really deliver a premium service. Um, and that goes across pay, payment sense and Dojo. So th what we've done is we've we've reviewed we've used a lot of data. Um, from our from our platforms to understand what's the optimal points what points where's the customer expectation where how long do they want to hold on the lines for how long are they willing to kind of um uh to to what's the level of service that they're expecting from us um and so we've we've transitioned from kind of we were roughly answering calls in in about kind of 60 seconds to 90 seconds um through to um, we now strive to answer our calls within 10 seconds. So our average wait um, is, is 10 seconds, basically three rings. Um, and um, what we found is we're surpassing customer expectations, especially in today's climate. A lot of companies out there are, are having to, to make tough decisions and, and 
find that balance of operational efficiency versus customer experience. Um, and so we're seeing it as a unique selling point where our, our customers, especially new customers coming on board, are almost pleasantly shocked that they are, their phone, the, the, they call through to service and it's, it's answered immediately. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in, in terms of that, that, that 9 and 10 delivery that you've got right now, what, what, what are the kind of other KPIs that, uh, that, that you use to help run your business? So this is this is really interesting. So from a from a managerial perspective, we monitor a huge amount, number of KPIs. We've got dashboards in the background that kind of will flag to us if things if things are, are going wrong. So so what we strive to do is just give the best customer experience. So um, so answer time for voice is a key piece. Um, we monitor KPIs such as like reply time on our tickets. Um, uh, we look at kind of uh, first contact resolution um we are we look at um just the usual contact center metrics around kind of performance side but then from a customer side we look at the usual things around kind of csat our qa around coaching um trust pilot mps and we really benchmark ourselves against our competitors in the industry just to ensure that we're striving for to be the best Great. And can, can I just ask you about some of the tools that you're using to, to measure that? Is, of course, from a collab with a Calabrio hat on and I'm <laughs> thinking about your, your contact centre partner, Route 101, who's, who's helped you a lot, right, in, in, over the course yeah. of the last number of months. What, what are the tools that you're using for, 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 to, to assess and measure those KPIs? Sure. So, so from a platform perspective, uh, we use NICE in contact for our phone. Um, we use Calabrio for our workforce management um, and we use Zendesk from our ticketing platforms. Um, so within specifically within Calabrio, we we have a rich level of data now. Um, we, we only we brought on Calabrio um, around about October November last year, so we're still actually relatively early on in our journey. But um, the the level of insight we get from Calabrio has just been amazing. We we get real clear visibility about where our kind of spikes in contact um, are throughout the day um, compared to resources. Um, we can run different scenarios within the, within the platform um, to to adjust our forecast for the day and uh, make those tactical decisions. Um, and so, from our forecasting planning team, one of the biggest benefits we've seen is there's just we don't you, we use hardly any spreadsheets now to 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 get this analysis because Calabria gives it to us at our fingertips. Um, from a contact center side. What we took, we took a strategic decision as a company um, to bring on a, a reporting platform to centralize all of our data. Um, so we use Google's Looker platform as our reporting side. So um, we have a, a data feed from Nice, Calabrio, um, from Zendesk, as well as um, the other kind of account management platforms we utilize, um, all feeding into Looker, all tying together um, so that we have that single view of the customer and we're able to 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 monitor the customer journey from from start to finish. Yeah, that's excellent. And and I think that as a general challenge, that access to data when it's coming from multiple platform is a real challenge. Not and it has been for for you and and it is I think for most contact centres. Um, the, there's lots of different routes up the mountain when it comes to technology selections, of course. And sometimes you can kind of centralise it in in a single platform, like a single CCAS platform or a single CRM. But you've kind of seen sounds like you've kind of pulled together some more best of breed type solutions to to create the environment that you needed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And then the benefits of this is you then get that one source of truth. So even from from um, from our finance teams um, or commercial teams, they're looking at the same data, they're using the same dashboards, but more locally within the contact center. One of the, the the things we're most proud of is around we've developed an agent scorecard, and I think we've all been there in in our past careers where uh, a team manager turns up to a one to one with an advisor. They've got one set of numbers, the advisor's got another set, and rather than having a meaningful conversation, you basically just argue for half an hour. Um, we've taken that completely away, so because we've built a scorecard um, where both it's completely visible for the agent as well as for the team manager. Um, you, you select the agent's name or you can, as a team manager, you can select your whole team. You can see your your performance um, and it's that one source of truth. Yeah, excellent. I think what what, what we should do is, is just, uh, Chantel, think about pulling the, the first poll up about the challenges that our audience faces in their contact centers. And, and while that's, that, that's um, coming onto the screen and, and you start thinking about it, maybe, um, 
um, Alvin, from your perspective, as well as those technology challenges, there's that people and process combination as well as technology that you also have to consider, always have to consider in the um, efficient running of contact centres. But that journey for the last couple of years has, has been a challenge, hasn't it? Just kind of get to, to build a contact centre, to get agents in place and to and to, to recreate something that we now recognise as this, this organisation called Dojo delivering the superb service that you're delivering. It, it wasn't easy, was it? You've, you've, you've had to kind of go through a, a recruitment and a, attracting the right employees in a very competitive market. Absolutely. So, so the Dojo Contact Centre in particular launched in the latter part of 2020. Um, and so therefore we were coming, well, we, we were starting to come out of COVID um, and, and things were starting to ease. Then we went back into lockdowns and, and uh, we did the hokey pokey of going back in and out of lockdowns uh, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. as part of the year. So, so um, that first wave of recruitment that we did, it was completely... Um, working from home, uh, we were abiding by obviously all the government um, guidelines. And so one of the biggest challenges early on for us was all around how do we make sure that we instill the culture that we want within our staff? Um, and how do we ensure that the if you're in the office, if you're working from home, um, that everyone has that same level of experience um, at working at Doji that makes it such a special place to work. So culture was probably our biggest challenge that we faced yeah. in early on. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? I've just you, You'll be looking at the, the poll results that, that the difficulty of maintaining a culture when your agents are part in the office, part at home, and, and it'll be different tomorrow. Um, and, and that whole kind of retention piece. And I think you, you, you describe some really interesting approaches to how you first of all just recruit the right people and and, and motivate them but but also yeah. how you kind of encourage people to be part of that in the office culture um and i think you called called it surprise and delight and do you want to just kind of use these poll results perhaps to I don't, i'm, I'm yeah, sure that's surprise um, Let's talk about that a little bit sure so so uh, the agent retention churn one um which is the clear winner of the poll um that is um that is absolutely probably one of our biggest challenges which which um i think it's it's a challenge that never ends right it just it's constant and it will always evolve um for us when we set up dojo we had some real key principles that we want to abide by so we wanted to recruit really high talented employees um and a key thing for us was to do that so that we empower them to do the right thing so so we we employ what we think are we've got the best agents um we're a bit biased by saying that but we think we've got the best agents um what we then said was right well the next step was we've got to train them really well we can't just have the best but then not give them a good enough training so we have a four-week classroom training um followed by four weeks of on, uh, of training bay grad bay um whatever everyone calls it um but where we've changed it slightly different is during that training bay, um, we've introduced something called what we call our new starter support coaches. So we have aligned a new starter support coach to uh, to an agent and we tried different ratios. And the goal of this was all around how do we get those agents up to competency levels as fast as possible. So initially we started on kind of one or two per 10 agents. Uh, we then actually changed it to one coach per four advisors. And at one point, we actually tried a one-on-one -on -one basis um, to go, well, if we do that really intense coaching, does that get us to that competency level even faster? What we found for our center was that one to four ratio was the real optimal level. So within four weeks, of, um, just over 90% of a training uh, bay group um, are hitting all those competency levels, um, which means that they then have an additional kind of four to six weeks before their initial probation review um, where 90% are already ready to be past probation and, 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 are, and are off the, to a flying start. So that recruitment and training part is real key in those initial days. But for us, once they've had their new start of support coach, actually the coaching and quality part is fundamental to our business. So we have a team of performance coaches and our team managers as well, who on a weekly basis will, will have coaching sessions with their advisors. But it's not just about hitting your stats. It's not just about um, doing doing your, the job well. 
it's about their career as well. It's about identifying right, where does this individual want to go in their career? How can we support them with development plans? Um, what wider opportunities are there for them to gain experience? Um, so that as part of it, it's the, our staff feel really empowered to drive their career forward, but also can see where there are opportunities. Because what we found was we all get attrition, of course, but what we found is um, we, were, we had started to see some people saying, right, I'm looking for that next move. There's nothing available what, and, and therefore looking externally. So that's been our biggest challenge is how do we, how do we introduce a framework and, and a career pathway for our advisors um, to really retain them and, 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 and nurture the skills that they've learned in that, that first kind of 12 to 18 months? Yeah, you can you can just never get complacent, no matter what you do in that area, can you? It's, it's and it's something we chatted about when we when we met. Um, I, I said that uh, one of our U.S. customers called Zippos, one of the kind of customer service darling case studies in the U.S., they were saying that that they had um, the attrition linked to their schedules as being the most often quoted issue yeah. and and then with the deployment of some self um, scheduling capabilities through collaborative wfm that wasn't referenced at all in the attrition i think when it, you when you were talking about attrition i think you've got career ambitions and people wanting to travel and things like that and it's not about issues with the role at all is it well, and and this is where you're going to have to send that check in the post for 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 um, for saying such I can do it. I'll write it now. But, um, we had a bit of that, so so we did have those problems. We worked off a lot of spreadsheets initially, and 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 this is going back pre Calabrio. Um, and what we found was where shift changes were coming up and rotors were coming up, we couldn't give our staff their rotors too far in advance because the forecast and planning team were were working just ridiculously hard but was just constantly firefighting to try and try and deliver that service. We've since brought Calabria in, and I mentioned earlier, it's just taken away a lot of that manual effort. And so that, that attrition and that churn trap challenge, has, we don't see any of that negative feedback in our exit interviews at all, um, because our shifts are out to 12 weeks. Um, and actually, that's what we commit to. I think they're actually out a bit longer to around about 16 weeks. Um, because the platform, there's so much automation and ease in there. Our previous uh, platform that we used used to just crash all the time. The guys would be working for hours on end and then lose all their work. Um, it's it's an incredibly stable platform. It's an incredibly easy to use platform. And um, I know for a fact that the forecast and planning teams, their employee satisfaction scores have gone have, have increased massively since bringing on the, on Calabria. No, that's it. That's excellent to hear. And I've got kind of so many follow on questions from from what you just described. But I'm just going to take a moment to, to ask the audience if they've got any questions, then please just type them in and then we'll, we'll pick them up and, and have, have um, them answered. Um, happy to kind of engage as much as possible with the audience as well as with you, Alvin. Right. Yeah, um, but in, in, in terms of um, some of the things that you said there that uh, I I kind of want to pull us back to that surprise and delight approach and getting people yeah. back to the office. I don't want to kind of forget that little point, but but I think a lot of it is around the significance of agent engagement that you're really yeah. passionate about as a business, isn't it? A lot, of, a lot of the things you're doing comes down to that because you know that if that goes well, then that impacts the retention and churn piece. Yeah. So, and, and the agent engagement, um, our approach to it, it's, it's a lot of common sense, but we, we went with the approach of just, we've hired really good people, let's treat them like adults. Let's just be really honest with them. When things go well, let's celebrate it. When things don't go well, let's hold our hands up to it as well. So talking about that kind of surprise and delight, and, and for us, it's, it's actually more about, it's all about culture. Um, and so coming out of lockdown and coming back into the office, we were really open and clear with all of our staff from the start that, um, hybrid working is absolutely a thing and we're embracing it but the culture we want people to really get our culture live and breathe our culture and we feel a huge amount of that is to, is taking place in the office so so we initially started off as one day a week but we communicated to all our staff going we think we're going to get to probably three or four days we're not going to set a, a target and get and, and do it we're just going to manage your expectations on it and um, we'll just see. So we started off with one day, um, about a month later, we, we went up to two, then three. For our frontline contact center workers, um, 
that's where we're at at the moment. So we're at three days a week. For managers, we tend to do kind of four or even five days a week now. Um, and it's we had a principle of work where you're most productive. So for our frontline advisors, we, we, we just said, look, team meetings, one-to-ones, coaching, they need to be face-to-face. It's so so boring doing it on Zoom, if I'm really, being really honest. Um, but also it's that interactive, it's being able to spend time with your team, really live and breathe the culture and 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 um, and have that time. So that's, we set that expectation with them um, and therefore they're bought into it. They knew there were no surprises. There wasn't suddenly a, right, you need to get back into the office from tomorrow. We, we'd, we'd communicated effectively months before we actually implemented anything. So, so there were no hidden surprises. On the surprise and delight part, for us, this is almost where we we make it a really attractive offering. So we pride ourselves that our office is part of our culture. It's not a traditional contact centre. Um, you can actually see behind me the funky wallpaper, the greenery, the plants. Um, we make it a really welcoming place to work. And we have um, we, we've embraced kind of just complete hot desking. Um, so we have team days where you'll sit with your team, but we also encourage everyone just to sit in different places, sit with different people. And it, what it means is you get to know everyone across the office. Um, you could be sat with senior leaders, um, even kind of um, our chief operating officer. He doesn't, he's not hidden away in an office at all. He sits out um, on a different desk every day because it's his opportunity and way of actually getting to speak to everyone, get to chat to people as well and, and get to know everyone. Um, but the surprise and delight bit for us, this is new to us um, from a Calabria side. Um, what we do at the moment from the engagement side is we just do nice little surprises. So, so we'll randomly um, put a free lunch on for for for, for staff. Um, we'll or when it was really really hot, we'd organise for like an ice cream van to turn up. Um, so just nice little touches for people to really kind of know that we we care about them and all their well being. We have a lot of communities and things in here. So there's a craft club. Um, I set up the Bristol band um, and and uh, we 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 play kind of once a month. Um, and um, there's a lot of things to get be part of um, part of dojo and be part of our culture. From a collaborative side, um, it's something we're looking to introduce soon um, is a bit of employee surprise and delight. So if we know that one day we're we're actually a bit under forecast, we've got some excess resource we're on top of everything. What we want to do is is have a have an opportunity to be able to go out to managers and go right. There's four or five slots that we can have um either can we offer just um just a half day holiday it's nice and sunny outside um let's reward our top performers there's no kind of um there's no bias towards it it's pick your best person and just say thank you to them by giving them half day or actually what we're doing at the moment um is we recently introduced a new learning uh, learning and development platform um uh, called thrive um and so we're really trying to find um kind of times throughout the weeks days where um rather than scheduling it we can just say to someone right actually you've got a couple of hours do you want to go and do some L&D on, on online go and learn learn some of the courses go and go and invest in your career and and your, your own development um so it takes it away from that scheduling bit where people know it's in the diary there to a more oh wow i've just been told i don't have to be on the phone for the next two hours and i can go and go and um go and spend some time developing myself and and we're, we're seeing that benefit come through um from our employee engagement side yeah that's excellent so you kind of that, that supportive of the reality of a hybrid workforce and the benefits that that can bring to everybody but also recognizing the culture really is in the offices and and kind of creating that fear of missing out environment you know with the, some of the things that you're doing and it seems to be working i mean it's it's working from an attrition point of view the numbers are pretty low right i mean we we all know the scary attrition and churn numbers um i don't think you you have yeah. that issue with some of the things you've been doing yeah absolutely so so um, if i speak specifically on the bristol office um where we're based, we're near uh, Temple Mead Station. Um, we're right in the heart of it. There is probably about four or five contact centres a stone's throw away, um, yeah. and so competition is high. Um, and and so what we've really tried to do is um, really invest in that employee engagement um, to keep attrition low. Um, and actually, that's my main KPI. So my manager Justin, who's COO, said. Um, if we employ the best people, if we train them well, coach them well, give them a great experience, give them a great place to work and develop them, why would people want to leave? 
so all those support teams and all those elements, training, quality, forecasting, planning, make sure the schedules and everything right, all of that sits with me. So therefore, my one KPI is on attrition. How do we ensure voluntary attrition is as low as possible? Um, and we're really proud of where we're at. There's always more and room to improve, um, but but when we benchmark ourselves around around kind of other places we've worked as well as um, as well as just across the industry, um, we're, our attrition is less than twenty percent um, for voluntary mm -hmm. external attrition, and um, so we're really proud of that. Yeah, that's great. Given as you said that competitive environment that you're in, um, I'm familiar with it. Just live um, a few miles down a road, so I know exactly where you are and and the, the nature of the businesses in the area where you where, where you where your your contact center is. The culture piece plays to the people side a lot of the people process and technology. If I return to the technology bit, because in it, it seemed to me that in a relatively short period of time, just a few years, you've evolved that could we just kind of re return to that and we kind of also wanted to to kind of make the point of of the involvement of route 101 they're, they're a really yeah. important partner for us but if you described your technology stack you know, the core let's say the core platforms with with the nice cx1 ccas platform zendesk and calabria would be and a look at from google as well i mean that's absolutely yeah. important but that route 101 is probably one of those organizations that's rare and has ccas skills CRM skills and the broader contact center application ecosystem skill. What kind of role have, have, have they played or are they playing in, in helping you evolve um, Absolutely. So, and moving forwards? So for, for me, Route 101 is, is my key strategic partner. Um, we approached them because um, we saw our, our kind of technology stack and we had a telephony platform at the time that was a bit outdated. It was um it would fall over quite regularly um we we already had zendesk and actually that was one area where we had invested a lot of effort and we're, we're getting huge value out of zendesk um but the wfm platform we had before as i mentioned we we, we just weren't using it. it wasn't a great platform we had a lot of manual spreadsheets attached to it because the platform itself didn't have the capability so um so we approached we did a whole tender exercise and as everyone does and um we we chose route 101 as our, as our provider um so what they were able to do is come in they did a whole big discovery session um and they basically recommended that we upgrade and, and move across to nice in contact um we integrate that with zendesk so there's a lot of auto population and things like that that we've done as part of it um but for the wfm actually we bring calabria on board and as part of um, our requirements, what we were looking for, Calabria was that was just the perfect partner for us. Um, we we are on a journey with it. So so we we launched last November. Um, we for me, I, I've upgraded platforms numerous times before in my career. Um, this is actually the smoothest um, implementation I've ever had. Um, within two hours of launch. Um, we had ironed out all teething issues, everyone was fully working, um, and it was just a huge success. And a, a huge part of that was Route 101. The, the project support leading up, um, the months before leading up to, impl to implementation day, uh, was just super invaluable. On, on the actual day, um, they provided resource to both Hull and Bristol on site, as well as remote, um, to iron out any of those little teething issues, make sure everything was all sorted. Um, and so it was just an incredibly successful launch. Um, since then, we've um, we've continued to really harness the power of that relationship and the expertise that Route 101 brings to get the best out of Calabrio as well as Nice. Um, so speaking with with Calabrio, um, some of the kind of automations that we've done as part of the scheduling and and um, and workforce management has has been critical. Um, we've launched the app for our advisors; so they can kind of book holidays themselves. Um, for me, the next step, the next project that the guys are, is currently in flight um, is automating that link between our, our payroll and HR platform and workforce management. So at the moment, that's still manual, um, but we're, we're working on that integration so that actually advisors, when they book, book holidays, um, it takes out that manual, um, that manual admin work from, from within, within the team at the moment. Yeah, brilliant, um, brilliant. You covered so much ground again there, and I just, uh, firstly, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate your points about Route One on this. They're so significant to us as a partner. They they do great things for us. They've got that that skill set in our 
product set, which is a rarity as, as kind of operational knowledge of the workforce optimization world. They have it. Um, and I'm glad to hear that they're, they're delivering such value to you. So that, that's, that's brilliant. Um, can I kind of return to you mentioned the mobile app and some of some of our audience won't perhaps know what yeah. that is. Could you just kind of expand on that and, and particularly around that idea of giving choice and preference, uh, con considering the preference of agents? Yeah, absolutely. So, so previously we didn't have an app. Um, agents had to view their schedules um, online uh, through 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 our previous platform, and it was a bit clunky. It wasn't most kind of it, it didn't look great to be honest. It wasn't a great user experience. With Calabrio, it's a much more modern UI, which just makes such a difference to advisors. But additionally, through the app, they can view their schedules, um, they can request shift swaps, they can um, book holiday through there. And um, if there's availability, it will auto approve. Um, if not, it can be referred to the team to, to actually run through it and, and approve, um, approve manually. Um, and it just gives opportunity future and pieces that we we haven't we've purposely tread slowly to get it right rather than just launch everything yeah and again this yeah. comes back to the employee engagement of rather than kind of a big bang here's 20 features that you didn't have yesterday we're trickling them out so it's just constantly oh here's another feature here's a new one here's the, and and we're, we're finding that that the, the guys really like that um so so other pieces that we're looking to, to come up is just things like where there's overtime we can post that out through there and they'll get notifications if they want to do it shift slides we've introduced so so people can they need to, to actually just slide their shift a bit it's so much easier to do that now um than than previously yeah that's great um yeah i think it's a it's a good approach to to drip feed those features um there's there's so much fun, so much functionality in that self-scheduling package that we have and it, as you say it can just be a little bit of a tidal wave hitting certain certain users so it's probably you're probably approaching it the best way i'd suggest it's really good to hear um perhaps what we what we should do is is think about how you, you what's coming next i mean you've kind of taken us on this journey of evolution the, the evolution across from from one phase of your existence as a company now to, to dojo how you've built contact centers evolving technology stacks the kpis that you've put in place but i'm kind of thinking about the where you see things going next um, sure. and it could be that this chantelle is, is an opportunity to to, to do two things. Any questions that have come in that we might need to answer, but perhaps after that piece, we can pull the poll up and then we'll we'll move on to talk about wh where where Alvin and the team are, are heading next. Any any questions at this point? Um, let's have a look. Uh, we've got, I'm just making sure I read this properly. Uh, so there's a question here that says, at what point did you realize spreadsheets were not giving what you needed um, and it was time to look at a WFM tool. Sure. So there was there was just a time we're, we're a fast growing company. So so as mentioned, we we launched Dojo in the latter part of 2020, and that first kind of three to six months, we had about 30 employees. Fast forward what two under two years, and we we've got circa 260 employees. And so what we found was when it was really small teams, and I would probably say less than about 75 80 employees you can manage it on spreadsheets because it's it's a, it's it's 80 employees it's it's eight teams it's 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 not too much too hard when it starts to get more complex and when we started to bring on uh, the operations starts to get a bit more complex in terms of things like um we widened our opening hours we have we utilize an outsourcer for um for overflow as well as for, for out of hours um this was the time when we started to think this is not manageable. Um, in addition, actually, a lot of it came from feedback. So our advisors were finding that shift swaps were being approved last minute and holiday was being approved, as well as, as I mentioned around kind of that, their, their rotors has been out to 12 weeks. We were aspiring to get there, but we just were struggling. And anytime someone within the team had, had a couple of days holiday, we fell behind. So it was at this point that that was a real light bulb moment where we said, right, we've really got to invest in our technology. Um, and that's when we started that exercise to, to, to look at providers, narrowed it down, chose Calabria as our chosen provider via Route 101 um, and, and commenced that implementation. Yeah, I think um, I think that all all's clear, all makes sense. Um, see that 
quite often with with organizations on that similar path to you i think um chantelle should we should we put the poll up now we're going to talk about the, the the what comes next and as as you launch that alvin i just want you you mentioned um that when it comes to technology change it sounded like you, you you've had that experience through your career journey um in the past but you you reference something not afraid to fail as yeah. something that you think about in your business could you just expand on that and then we'll kind of come back to this list yeah absolutely so when we when we built dojo from, from scratch we we had a lot of the whole leadership team had a lot of experience from different companies different industries all contact center and operations related and so we wanted to bring all the best bits for, from our past that that worked really well but we also wanted to try new things and just not be afraid to fail but also if it does fail make decisions quickly whether or not it's it's a dead horse and and it's it's move on onto something new or actually is it just an iterative piece and just needs that kind of improvement to, to get to where it needs to be a good example of this is is around kpis and reporting so we always wanted to empower agents and keep keep our number of kpis really simple um and so we had kind of two or three kpis um for for a particular skill but as we upskilled our agents to be multi-skilled on, on different areas um that two or three kpis then became two or three kpis per skill set so as yeah. the contact center yeah. evolved and advisors started to have four or five skill sets suddenly they're having to manage 15 kpis as part of their bonus um and so we got feedback from the agents to say that this is starting to get ridiculous because um like i'm missing one or two of my metrics but i'm smashing all the others and yet that's impacting my performance um and so we really took on that feedback we spoke to a lot of advisors uh, we hold regular feedback focus groups to, to to get that voice of voice of the agent and um we basically stripped it right the way back so earlier i mentioned that the managers have got a full suite of reports and, and dashboards that, that give them give them clear visibility of how everything's getting on for advisors, we've simplified it down to two metrics. Um, a productivity metric around uh, that we call contacts per day. Um, so that's a, that's around the efficiency side. Um, and a qualitative a quality metric, uh, which is CSAT. Um, and we we've pulled it all the way back to think if our agents are delivering the right number of contacts per day and, and they're delivering that efficiency side and their CSAT's great well what else is there they're delivering a great effective customer experience whilst being yeah. efficient yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. i follow that and and it's interesting now looking at the uh, the, the poll results here because i think that um, potentially that not afraid to fail might be needed in some of some of the uh, the the audience's environments especially that bottom piece right which is obviously the the entire world is talking about not just the contact center world um probably something that you're going to be looking at very soon isn't it the conversational uh, it's absolutely it's, it's something I, I spend a lot of time actually at the moment so looking at the results from the poll um the two areas for me and, and the teams I look after um are the workforce management piece as mentioned we've got collaborate we've got this fantastic tool and we're unlocking features but the team continue to do more and more to really harness all of its capability but that's the part where I've moved personally I've moved on um, away from workforce management because that's what the team are now driving themselves and they're empowered to really utilize the relationship with route 101 um, and and get the best out of the platform um, my focus at the moment um, a huge amount of my time is all around just learning as much as I can about AI generative AI natural language models chat GPT all of the the buzzwords that, that everyone and in every webinar and conference you go to is, is talking about um, so we are looking to to harness the power of generative AI um, but the biggest lesson that I've, I've heard across the board from, from a number of customers I've spoken to a number of colleagues um, in my network it's just around treading carefully and slowly it's all around overcoming those, those security challenges especially at the moment the GDPR pieces especially a lot of the open AI and, and generative AI parts are based out in the US so it's overcoming those challenges but then what I'm finding is all the research I'm, I'm learning is 
Um, everyone is everyone is basically using it in a co-pilot way rather than an autopilot way. So using generative AI as a support tool for the advisors to make them more efficient, but more importantly, make them more effective um, rather than just trying to automate the world. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, actually. You, you might remember that when, when I was with you in the office, I took a photo of that uh, that vision statement and it, and it yes. kind of, I, I made a note of it. I don't want to get it wrong. I wanted to quote it, but it absolutely ties in with what you just said. It's the, the dojo vision is, is the, of, a, of a thriving experience economy enabled by technology, but powered by people. And it's, that's pretty much what you just described. Let's use the technology in the right way, but this is still a people powered business. Um, Absolutely. And and the, vi the vision is the final part of what we're trying to deliver. Um, the company's purpose is to empower the experience economy. So that is as, as it. The mission is to provide our customers with tools that turn transactions into meaningful relationships. And the way we do it is our vision is to drive that, as you said, that thriving experience economy um, it's through technology. So how do we enable it through tech, but it's ultimately powered by our people? Yeah, that's great, and I and I think um, I think we're probably closing in on the end of the of the the conversation here. It, I'll come back to Chantal just double check if we've got any further questions. But it, at this point, anything you wanted to, anything more you wanted to share before I kind of wrap up? Um, I think for us, the journey that we've been on the last couple of years, the 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 biggest takeaway for me is just around listening to our staff. It's really engaging with them getting them to come as part of the journey that we've been on from the start and not being afraid to, to get that radical candor, to get that feedback from them. We, we've actually introduced um, a platform called what we call Slido for Change, um, which is a mechanism for, for anyone across operations um, to recommend improvements that we can continually make because we come up with ideas as a leadership team and then we speak to the managers across the board, but actually it's, we're coming up with these improvement ideas for the advisors. Well, they're the best people to tell us how can we improve yeah. their experience and 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 improve the the processes that we've got for our customers as well. So, so we have this slide for change where we get all sorts of recommendations and we review them on a on a regular basis um, and take them take great ideas forward. But if there's ideas that they come up with that we can't do or actually we don't want to do, um, we give them the rationale as to to why and 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 and, and just be really honest with them. Um, and just for context, we get all sorts from, uh, we are now a dog friendly office. Um, so we have around about six dogs in the office uh, a day um, uh, as part of it. And that, that, that was part of the, the feedback we got um, through to, we get a number of kind of process and system changes of, oh, it would be great if it could do X, Y, and Z. Fantastic. We'll work with our product teams to try and enable yeah. that feature for you. Yeah, it's great. Um, Chantel, any questions before I wrap? Yes, we do. Um, so Excellent. the first question we have is, did you see any impact on absence rates with the introduction of self-service, self-serve shift slides? Sorry, that was really hard to okay. say. Yeah, well done. <laughs> um, shift changes, et cetera. Um, so, so just to be completely transparent, the shift slides is a, is a relatively new one. So we're, we've only been doing this for the last couple of months, so it still might be a bit too early. Um, to tell on that one. Um, honestly, we haven't seen much of an impact on, on absence. Um, we have a relatively low absence rate anyway. What I would say is this year, and I don't, I'm not sure about any other companies, but um, we've just been hit by all the super bugs that have been going around nonstop um, post COVID. Um, and it seems to be waves. So there doesn't tend to be um, absence around uh, changes around that side. It's, it's been more, we're either running at less than 2%, or suddenly for three days it will spike to about six percent. Um, um, but but as I said, it's it's it, we've not we've not seen that side. For us, it was just about providing agents that flexibility and and that improved experience. Amazing, thank you. Um, the next question I have um, is the last question that I've got on here. So if there aren't any are any more questions before we close off, please get them in for us now. Um, so the question is, how do you bridge the gap between individual performance of agents and learning slash development? Um, really, really good, it's a really great question. So um, as I mentioned, we've simplified the performance for the advisors. 
Um, and a huge part of the advisors kind of development and everything is around those coaching sessions and one-to-one -one sessions. So they're having those discussions, not just with their manager, but also with their performance coach who can help guide them in it. But one of our recent uh, initiatives that, that we launched um, uh, by our, our quality and training manager um, was the launch of what we call Beyond Induction. So Beyond Induction is all around providing visibility, first and foremost, to all employees across operations around the different careers, um, to career paths that, that people can take, but linking it to the different skills you could learn as an advisor um, to help you get into those different areas of the business. So as an example, we have um, an, outbound an outbound team that look to, to create, um, that look to do um, outbound um, health check conversations with our customers. Um, and at the same time, if there's an opportunity to, to offer um, additional services, so it could just be like an additional card machine or ability to pay online, those bits, um, that happens as part of that health check conversation with the customer. Well, that's an element of sales to it. So if someone's interested in getting into that sales environment, actually having that experience there is a great starting point to gain that bit of experience um, as a stepping stone to get to move into that world. Um, similarly, if someone's interested in product or data, well, there are opportunities to join kind of trial teams and test teams as we're launching new products. You work really closely with the product managers. They come to Bristol and, and to Hull all the time to kind of launch the new uh, new features and things. And so it's great ways to kind of build your network, um, build your experience, while still adding huge amount of value to the business. So Beyond Induction is about giving them that visibility, but also enabling our advisors to sign up to the different different career pathways and different streams that they have to 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 widen their um, their knowledge, but also give them a clear route to different areas across across Dojo. Amazing, thank you. I hope that answers um, that, those questions there. Um, that's it, Richard. There's no further questions from the audience. That's great. Thank you, Chantal. And, and um, I know that you, you, you want to kind of say a few words at the end, but just for me to wrap up by saying thank you, really, Alvin, for, for your time and your, your insights. Right. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure meeting you. Um, we're we're going to hear from Chantal about some of the awards and the, and the UK Contact Centre Forum awards process. From what I heard from you, it's people like you that are transforming our industry and deserve to be on a pedestal and, and deserve public recognition. And I just, the, everything you shared with me, I'm sure we, Chantal can help you complete an application form for some of those awards. <laughs> so it's it, brilliant. I, 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 I loved it. Brilliant. Absolutely. Well done. Thank you. Thanks for your time as well, Richard. It's great to have a conversation with you around all of this. Look forward to my call, Alvin. We will have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it just leaves me to say thank you to everybody that's taken the time to join us um, today. And a very special thank you to Richard and to Alvin for delivering today's session. Um, again, this, this webinar was brought to you in partnership with Calabria and Route 101. So thank you very much to the partners there. Um, for more information on UKCCF and on our events and our awards programme that uh, Richard just mentioned, it was uh, uh, launched earlier this week. We're in our 11th year. It's going to be amazing. You can see all of the categories on our website, www.uk-ccf.co.uk. Uh, nominations, as I said, are now open. And you can keep up to date with all of the industry's recent news, blogs, white papers and and all other resources you can think of by visiting our, our uh, e-magazine Contact Centre Monthly. That's www.contactcentremonthly.co.uk. Um, there will be a follow-up email coming out with uh, both Richard and Alvin's LinkedIn profiles in. So if you do have any further questions, maybe you thought of something after this session has ended, or if you're listening to this on playback, please feel free to reach out to them directly. And um, I'm pretty sure they'll be more than happy to answer anything that you have. Uh, so thank you very much. Enjoy the upcoming weekend. The weather looks set to uh, improve and have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.